This lesson is going to cover the concept of how wind moves. And the, the four primary types we're going to refer to are sea, land, valley, and mountain. Prior knowledge would include the concepts of density and differential heating. First of all, density. We have learned earlier in previous lessons that warm air rises and cool air sinks. And as far as differential heating is concerned, we learned that water has a higher capacity for heat. In other words, it takes more energy to change the temperature of water than it does other materials like sand, soil, or air. And primarily, we're going to be discussing uh, how the air temperature changes over uh, water and over land. Now, I'm not going to be reading each, and, uh, each of these slides to you. Uh, you can always go back and read the actual text that appears right over here on the right-hand side. So I'm going to be focusing mainly on the picture and discussing the concepts therein. So let's go ahead and get started. What we've learned recently is that areas of high pressure will always move to areas of low pressure. And this is just kind of basic physics. In order to get an object to move, you have to increase pressure. And then that object will move based on that pressure. So let's take first uh, a look here at sea breezes. And the other thing that we need to understand is that the name of a breeze or the name of a wind is given based on its origin. So if it's called a sea breeze, it's because it comes from the sea. If it was a north wind, let's say, then that wind is coming from the north. So the two primary things we're going to keep reflecting back on are A, high pressure always moves towards low pressure, and B, the name of a breeze or a, a wind in general is named based on where it came from. So if we start off with sea breeze, it is called a sea breeze because the wind is blowing from the sea towards the land. And the main area you want to always look at is the bottom of this convection cell because that's where, the, where we're going to experience the wind down here on the surface. All right. Now, as I said earlier, differential heating plays a huge part in this. So just looking at the bottom temperatures here that are listed, you have daytime water temperature at about 18 degrees Celsius versus the daytime land temperature at 27 degrees Celsius. So that makes this area a warmer place. Therefore, warm air would be over the land and rise. Now, there'd be cooler air over the water because water temperatures take more energy to change. Therefore, it's colder there. All right, so we have warm rising air, and this looks a lot like what we saw in our convection currents when we were studying density. But I want to point out that if you have a lot of air sinking over an area, this area right here is going to create more pressure. There will be more pressure air right here versus over here where air is leaving this location. Since air is leaving this area, this is a lower area of pressure than this higher pressure area here. And as you see the arrows being drawn, remember what I said earlier, high pressure will move to low pressure. So this is a high pressure area versus this area of low pressure. And it's being called a sea breeze because it originated from the sea. Notice that the sun is shining at this point, so it is heating the land, making it hotter, and the water not quite as hot. Now, that's opposite of what you would see at night. At night, the cycle goes the other direction. Now, because water has a higher capacity, it also has an ability to store heat and maintain its temperature a lot easier, whereas the land is going to drop its temperature a little bit more when the sun goes down. Therefore, the air over the land is now cooler than the air over the ocean, and the entire cycle will go the other direction, causing warm air over the ocean to rise and the cold air over the land to sink. And you can see that the cycle has reversed, which means, thus being called a land breeze, it must come from the land, and it is. It's a high pressure area here, because we have cold air sinking on top, and warm air rising away from this area, so now this is a low pressure area. And as we've said once before, high pressure always moves towards low pressure. Okay, now this one, though it does show kind of an elevated location on this map or on this picture, this is not really about elevation, although it could slightly be a factor. This isn't really a, a higher location. What I'm going to look at now is valley versus mountain, and we're going to really look at how pressure can be increased or decreased based on an elevational change. So I'm going to start first with a valley breeze. 
All right, now they're calling it a valley breeze, which means it comes from the valley. And so we have a higher elevation versus a lower elevation. And in this particular case, this is a daytime situation. There's going to be higher pressure down here anyway, because that's where most of the air is. There is higher pressure at lower elevations, and there is lower pressure at higher elevations. So already we have a difference of pressure. This is a high pressure area and a low pressure area. Now, Earlier, we noticed that cold air will sink and warm air will rise. That's still true here, and you have this cold air up here that would want to sink down, but it is daytime, and the sun is providing a lot of energy to this high-pressure air anyway, so it's causing a very strong updraft along the upside of the mountain, so that cold air can't sink right now. Instead, it gets pushed and is sent around in a circle, and then it cycles this way. Okay, the reason that this is winning is because it's daytime and because it's fueling this warm air with heat. Now that reverse a situation happens again at night. Now at night, now this cold air can sink, even though there's higher pressure down here in general because of the temperature, uh, because of uh, elevation differences. The reason why the warm air doesn't rise now against this this cold sinking air is because now the air is so much more uh, cold than it was earlier so it's colder than it was and because there's just not enough energy it is not able to go against this stronger pressure of air sinking and when warm air does try to rise against this it really just can't it loses energy it runs out of that energy so instead it gets pushed the other direction and warm air will rise on this side of the convection cell and now there's a higher pressure or a greater strength of air really so stronger air is higher pressure air so now this air is stronger it will push this direction and now we have a reverse a mountain breeze originating from the mountain okay so a quick recap the main concept is a that high pressure air will always move towards low pressure air okay b a breeze or a wind is always named by the area that it came from. Mountain breezes come from the mountains. Valley breezes come from the valley. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up. You know, go back, watch the video again, and go back and read these areas of text here, and it'll give you just a little bit uh, more information about it. But I pretty much summarized those concepts anyways. That's the end of this video, and you know, it's not too difficult of a subject. If you really think about it, it's just a breeze. Huh?